it going everyone? And today we have a... A 1998 Honda Civic Coupe. So let's get into the interview. What are the specs of the car? Um, so the engine, it's running a um, B18 out of a Honda Integra Type R. Um, it's been rebuilt, it's a high compression race built engine. Um, so it's got uh, high compression pistons, uh, forged rods, it's got aggressive race cams, full built head, um, ported polished, uh, valves all regrimmed, all that sort of stuff, and a full Supertech um, head package. Um, so titanium valves, springs, retainers, like the full lot basically. But um, yeah, so it's still the 1.8. Um, didn't bother changing the stroke or, or anything like that. Didn't want to kind of put it out to a 1.9 or a 2 litre. Um, so uh, kept it standard in that respect. So it's still a, a B18 as such. Um, it's just a B18 with loads of kind of added fancy bits chucked at it to make it a bit more power. Yep. Um, so it's running about 220 brake at the moment, uh, just just under. Um, and that's to the front wheels. Uh, the, blast, the, the flywheel. So it was oh. about. It was just under. I think it was just under 200 to the wheels from memory. Okay. Um, but it does need to go back and get tuned again. Uh, it was starting to run out of injector duty. Uh, it was maxing out the injectors on the, the dyno at the time. So um, I've got bigger injectors, new fuel rail, and, and everything to put back on it. Um, so I need to do that and get it tuned again. Yep. Um, but going from what I'd seen when I researched the build, when I was collecting all the parts, it should be kind of high 230s, poss possibly on a good day 240, depending on the rolling road. So. And, that, and that is to the wheels, yes? Uh, again, that'll be to the flywheel. Okay. But you'll probably be looking, there's not a lot of transmission loss with a front wheel drive, so um, yeah, yeah. it should uh, maybe be about 215, 220 to the wheels, all, when all said and done. So, What uh, is the history on the car and how long have you owned it for? Um, so I've had the car nearly 18 years now. I bought the car when I was 17. Um, and it's kind of been part of my life the whole way through. Yep. Did driving lessons in it, passed my driving test in it, met my now wife in it, did our first date in that car. When we went away and I proposed over a weekend away, we are driving that car, became the wedding car, so it's kind of been all the way all the way through my life. It's a nice thing to have for the odd nice day. Oh, I can't really, can't really complain. It owes me nothing now after all these years, so I've had it um, 18 years, so or nearly 18 years, so um, it's not really worth ever getting rid of now. You've never sold it once? No. No, I thought about it back uh, when I was younger, before I did the, the B18 swap. Uh, I was on the verge of buying an Integra Type R. Yep. But couldn't really bring myself to, to get rid of the car. And then at that point in time, a friend of mine was breaking an Integra and said, you can have the engine and box for a good price. I was on apprentice wages still, but you let me pay it up monthly. So it was kind of a no-brainer that that's just, that's just what, what you do, just swap it. And, from then on, I've put that much time and effort into the car that it, it's part of the family now. Oh, wow. It's part of the family, so I can't ever see myself now getting rid of it. So what cosmetic modifications have you done to the car? So I've kept it kind of OEM plus. I didn't want to do any like big wings, big body kits or yep. things like that. Kind of most notably will be all the carbon fibre stuff, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so it's got a carbon fibre roof, full replacement roof panel, bonnet, boot lid as well, and the front ends um, all been carbon skimmed as well. Yep. Uh, carbon front splitter as well. And other than that, it's all kind of factory Honda stuff, um, just like some wind deflectors, bits and pieces like that. Yep. Um, kind of Econine style rear lip as well, just to kind of tie that in with the rest of the car. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, it's pretty much just as it rolled out the factory. Brilliant. I li you like spending your money on the carbon fibre? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, the carbon fibres, uh, the most recent carbon fibre was uh, just for the show for the docks yesterday. Okay. Um, the paintwork was looking a bit tired. And it was, again, one of these things, why just why just put it back to how it was when you could make it better, basically. Um, so it worked out only a little bit more expensive to go and get them sorted with carbon fibre rather than just paint. So it felt like a no-brainer, really. And yep. yeah, I've definitely got a problem when it comes to carbon fibre. Already looking, <laughs> already looking at the next thing that I could get, get redone. So um, ah, time will tell with that. Next, next thing's doors and side skirts and all that. So I can see that happening again in the future. You wanted to go full carbon? Probably not, but never say never. We'll <laughs> see what happens. Fair enough. So what have you done to the interior of the car? Um, so it's all stripped out. I used to do a lot of track days, um, okay. kind of earlier in ownership. Um, so it's stripped out, bucket seat for the driver's seat. Um, it's got a full roll cage on it. 
um, it's got um, strut braces, kind of all then just your basic sort of Honda track car bolt-ons. Uh, as I say, fully stripped out in the back, so no rear interior at all. Um, kind of wrapped all the interior trims, just try and make them look a bit nicer than the 90s kind of mm -hmm. faded beige plastic. Um, Integra DC2 passenger seat. That's kind of it. There's, there's not much left in it apart from that. I won't lie, the, the ride is quite rough, but it does make a difference for like track use, which I'm sure you, you like to use it for that. Yeah, basically that was kind of the purpose of it. I, st I, I started out as my daily driver when I first passed my test, and um, then over time it just kind of got a bit more ridiculous over the years. Yeah. So I ended up um, just buying like cheap winter dailies, like winter runabouts. And then got to the point I could afford to insure two cars, so it just seemed sensible to just make this a sort of weekend car. Yeah. So, uh, what are the tyres you've put on the car? Uh, it's running a mismatch uh, at the moment. It's got a uh, Nankang NS2Rs in the front mm -hmm. and a pair of Federal RSRs in the back. Yeah. Purely just fronts were getting a bit low and I couldn't get another pair of the Federals. Mm -hmm. They didn't seem to make them anymore. So, I've tried these Nankangs, they seem to be quite good. Yeah. So the rears, the rear tyres are kind of getting up for uh, getting replaced. So probably just make them a match and set because they seem to kind of do the job. Not tried them on track yet, but certainly for kind of back roads and normal driving, they seem to be kind of up to, up to the task. So yeah, uh, we'll kind of stick with them just now and see how we get on. No point, no point changing it when it seems to work quite well. So yeah, very grippy, I'm sure. From there, I kind of do that and take it from there. Really, what springs have you uh, put on it? Um, it's running a set of Jay's Racing uh, N1 coilovers, um, so I believe they are circuit track race coilovers. Um, put them on a long time ago, the spring rates are sky high, I think the spring rates are 18k front and 14k rear or something, um, which compared to what you normally get on a set of Meister R's or BC's is way, way, way higher. Um, so. Bumpy back roads can be a bit interesting, it does chuck the car about a little bit. Um, but again, when you're on track, which is kind of what it's all designed for, um, they're brilliant. The car's nice and corner's nice and flat, it is really, really good. Here at the Gearshift crew, we do not like to put up a sponsor for someone whose product we haven't tested or don't have personal experience with. Now, with SureSleep, I have personal experience with their brand, as well as a whole load of family members and friends, and I can attest to their quality and to their service. So for £10 off, you can get free delivery and assembly here in Northern Ireland. Check the link out. So what would be the rarity like for this car? Uh, they seem to have kind of disappeared over the last like five to 10 years, kind of old Civics in general. Yep. Um, I think they were maybe a bit more disposable when they were newer. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously then people started to buy them, modify them, break them, crash them, scrap yeah. them. They, a lot of them have ended up rotten. Mm -hmm. so end up getting broken for bits and then the shells scrapped so don't see very many out on the roads or for sale anymore and the coupes were always a bit rarer as well for some reason I don't know why um, even kind of back when Civics were quite common there would be row, row after row of VK hatches um, at car shows and at meets so there's never any coupes it was always just the hatches so um, I've seen one or two recently this year but there's not, ma not many floating about nowadays at all but yep. certainly not that I've seen Sounds amazing. Definitely screams when it gets in the beat it. Yes. <laughs> so what sort of horsepower is the uh, engine putting out? Uh, at the moment it's just under 220 um, at the crank. Um, but when we were uh, tuning it on the, the dyno, it started to run out of injector duty, it was maxing the injectors out. Um, so I've got a new set of injectors, bigger injectors, new fuel rail, pressure regulators, kind of the full shooting match for that. So I just need to get all that fitted and then get it retuned and kind of see what it makes. But from the research that I'd done when I was getting the build kind of put together and buying all the parts, it should do kind of high three, uh, high two thirties. Some folk in America said 240, but that depends on rolling road and there's that many variables with that. But if it was kind of 230 odd, it would, it would be good. It's good fun as it is. So I think an extra kind of 10, 15 horsepower would only help it. Um, and may as well kind of maximise all the stuff that's been done to it. Um, so we'll kind of get all the bits fitted hopefully hopefully this year, maybe start next year and get it retuned and just see what, basically see what it wants to do. What sort of a gearbox do you have on it? Uh, it's just a standard Integra DC2 one. Yep. Um, I think it was a 96 spec Integra from memory, so it's a 4.4 final drive, so it doesn't rev quite as high in the motorway, so it makes it a slightly nicer place to be. 
So it still sits about 4,000 RPM in fifth at 70. So it still does rev quite high, and obviously with the loud exhaust, it does kind of scream at you. Well, I mean, you've kind of already explained it, but uh, is the car your daylight? No, um, it used to be when I first got it. Um, obviously, being young, it was I could only afford one car. Um, and then when it became B18, it kind of turned into a weekend sort of second car. And yeah, it, it comes out on kind of the occasional weekend and goes to shows, and that's kind of it. It's very much a garage queen now. But I'd like to start using it a bit more because it is actually okay to drive day to day. It's not actually that bad, considering it's on really stiff coilovers and it's really loud. It's actually okay to drive. So I'm trying to use it a little bit more just to justify it a bit more. Um, but it's a bit much, so I'm getting a bit old for this to be a daily. So <laughs> I need something a bit more sensible for a daily driver now. But nah, no plans to make it a full daily again, because also it's in good condition still, and I want to try and keep it nice. And if you're parking in Tesco car park every weekend, it's going to get dense, it's going to get dings, so it's not really worth not really worth putting it through it anymore. It's a bit too much of a kind of modern classic now to put it through that. Because I had people asking, I got an RX7 a few years ago, and I had a few people then asking, is that the Civic going, how much do you want for it? They're like, basically, what do you want for it? And yeah, there's no money that would make me part with it, I don't think. Um, it'd have to be a crazy, crazy, like, yeah. unjustifiable amount of money. And nobody would ever pay it, so it's never going to go anywhere. It's just, yep. unfortunate enough, it can just sit. If times get a bit tough, it can just sit. If everything's paid off on it, you can just sort it, cancel the insurance, and it can just sit. I have space in the driveway, it can just sit like I did before. Uh, if time gets a bit tough or life gets a bit busy, it can just not waste away, but it can sit and get a bucket of water chucked over it every couple of weeks and just wait for its time again. So what other future modifications are you thinking of doing to the car? Um, at the moment the main thing is just to get the fuel system fitted, um, get the bigger injectors and stuff fitted and then get it mapped again, so at least the engine's where it should be. Yes. Um, other than that, tidy it up a wee bit because it's sat off the road for a couple of years so there's kind of bits of paint and some of the carbon's shown it a wee bit with a bit of sun fading and stuff so get all that tidied up and then after that see what comes. I'd like a new bucket seat, new driver's seat, um, new harness, bits and bobs of that. Again just kind of tidy things up because yeah. it's pretty much built to what I want now mm -hmm. um, and I don't see the point in changing things just to try and change it up. I'm not one of these people that will change a car for every show season just because. Yeah, it's very flat. Oh, it corners really well. We'll give it a bit of E-Tech as well. That's uphill. Watch the screens. So I mean for the little 1.8 it does it does get itself down the road. Oh it just revs for days, I love that! Rev limiter is at 9,100 just now. Um, yeah. Again, got capped because we're starting to kind of run out of injector duty, so there's every chance that it'll um, be able to rev a bit higher. It's certainly built to rev a bit higher, um, so we we'll kind of once it's uh, retuned again, we'll just see what it does. Um, so there's no point in revving it out if it's not making the power. Yeah. But um, just because of how aggressive the cams are, the VTEC doesn't come in till uh, 6,800, so it's, it is really high. Mm. Um, so you do need to be right at the limiter to, to change gear, otherwise it does drop out of E-Tech, but um, I'm from, from what I can remember from uh, when it was on the rolling road, it makes about 180 horsepower out of VTEC, which isn't far off what a standard B18 made top end, so yep. um, it's certainly got the power there anyway. So what will be some of the quirks about the car? Um, the car is quite, it is quite as it was from the factory, yeah. so it's not anything that's too off the wall. Things like having the aero catches obviously stop the bonnet from potentially pinging up. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that people always wonder what you're doing when you're going to open the bonnet. Mm -hmm. um, and then just when you're then into aftermarket parts like bonnets and boot lids and stuff like that, boot lid doesn't shut right, it's yep. like Russian roulette whether it's going to shut or not. <laughs> um, but other than that, the car is fairly uh, it's fairly as it was, mm -hmm. so it's not too, it's not too quirky. Mm -hmm. um, uh, which is, to be fair, <laughs> sometimes better that way than having these weird wee, weird wee things that you need to try and remember about and stuff like that, like um, removable steering wheels and stuff, but yep. that's all just kind of par for the course for an old Japanese car, it's always good for a bit of security, take that off and put it in the house then. They've really got to be keen to come and try and take it off you. VTEC's so well designed. Oh, it's brilliant. It's so addictive though, so, so addictive. Just the noise, and this isn't... 
you don't get the whole um, like VTEC kind of kick that you get, like the kick up the back side when it goes into VTEC, just because of the fact it's mapped to be smooth. Yeah. So it is just a nice sort of like progressive pull that you get, but yeah, the noise, is, the noise is really, really addictive. Now it's time to rate the car. So, for future classic, since it isn't the Type R model from standard, and since he has also modified it, we have given it a six. Now, for daily, he did used to daily the car, but right now it's not bad, but it's not great because of the suspension, so we have given it a four. For wallet hurt, it should be good. Honda's unknown for their reliable engines, but since he has added modifications, we have marked it down as a five. This is a really fun car. It's a stripped out, light, race built engine with semi slicks. So, because of those reasons, we've given it a 7. Now, the total is 22 out of 40, which is 55%. So, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Make sure you like, subscribe, and yeah, follow our new podcast channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.